Donc, bienvenue euh, à la cérémonie de, du prix du savoir en libre accès. So, welcome to the Open Scholarship Award Ceremony. Je suis Mélanie Brunet, la bibliothécaire de l'éducation ouverte, et je suis aussi co-présidente du prix du savoir en libre accès 2022. Uh, I will be your MC for this event. I don't do this often, so please forgive me if it's not great. Um, mais nous allons débuter avec um, quelques brefs discours suivis de la présentation de notre invité d'honneur. If you have any questions during the presentation, feel free to add them in the chat. Um, ensuite, vous pourrez utiliser vos micros pour poser vos questions uh, de vive voix après la présentation. Donc, sans plus tarder, j'aimerais saisir la parole à Talia Chong. Merci beaucoup, Mélanie. Donc, pour ceux et celles qui ne connaissent pas, je suis Talia Chang, je suis la bibliothécaire en chef et vice-provost ici à la bibliothèque de l'Université Ottawa. Um, et je suis vraiment, vraiment contente de vous voir en si grand nombre à la cérémonie de cet après-midi. Donc, avant de commencer, j'aimerais que nous prenions un moment pour euh, rendre hommage au peuple algonquin qui sont les gardiens traditionnels de la terre sur laquelle nous avons le grand privilège de travailler. Et nous reconnaissons le lien sacré de longue date l'unissant à ce territoire qui demeure non cédé. Nous rendons également hommage à toutes les personnes autochtones qui habitent Ottawa, qu'elles soient de la région ou d'ailleurs. Nous reconnaissons les gardiennes et gardiens des savoirs traditionnels de tous âges. Nous en aurons aussi leurs dirigeantes et dirigeants d'hier, d'aujourd'hui et de demain, au courage indéniable. Um, as I reflect on this, on this affirmation, I think about my own arrival in this place uh, that we now call Canada. Um, and as someone whose family immigrated to this location, um, because where we were really didn't offer neither a safe nor a, nor a very promising future, I, 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 I'm again struck by the, the, the many privileges that I have having found myself here by virtue of decisions my, my, my family took. And as a young person and a newcomer to Canada, learning about Canadian history and learning about Canadian culture, I look back and I feel how inexcusable it was that there was very little presence of First Peoples um, traces in my education and in my physical environment. Um, and And more and more, we are uh, broadly aware of the fact that these these elements of presence were systemically erased. So now that we have the privilege of working in a knowledge organization in the university, in the library, I think it's really quite urgent that we take all opportunities to inform ourselves and to learn ourselves of the gaps that exist in our in our knowledge, and uh, even more importantly, to ask ourselves how we can be the most impactful, effective allies to First Nations, Métis, and Inuit communities in their own goals, in strengthening their communities, and in revitalizing uh, their cultures. So that's that's my my small reflection uh, as I once again have the opportunity to, to speak the words of the affirmation. Um, je ne vais pas prendre trop de temps, mais j'aimerais prendre ce moment à exprimer ma sincère reconnaissance à celles et ceux qui ont travaillé beaucoup, beaucoup sur le programme de remise des prix, des prix um, et ceux qui ont organisé l'événement d'aujourd'hui. So, a little call out to Mélanie Brunet, our charming MC, uh, Leanne Butler, Andrea Lebel, and last but not least, Daniel Godon. Needless to say, the ceremony and celebration would not at all be possible without teachers and researchers who engage in open science and truly believe in the importance of open access and its transformational potential on our society. Donc, aux chercheurs et enseignants qui ont soumis leurs projets et à ceux et celles qui font avancer les pratiques de la science ouverte, chapeau et un grand merci. Donc, sans, sans euh, délai, je vais maintenant céder la parole à mon collègue Daniel Goulon, bibliothécaire universitaire associé pour la division de l'édition Ivorte et initiative numérique. Merci beaucoup, Talia. Merci, Mélanie. 
Donc, euh, nul besoin de me représenter encore. Merci beaucoup, Talia, pour euh, m'avoir présenté. Donc, moi, il me fait un grand plaisir de prendre la parole là, avec, afin de présenter le, le prix du, du savoir en libre-accès. Euh, depuis les débuts du mouvement là, en faveur du libre-accès, les, les bibliothèques académiques ont, ont été à l'avant-plan, démontrant leur caractère proactif et à la limite activiste et militant en faveur de l'accès à l'information et aussi à, de la démocratisation de, de cet accès à l'information. Euh, as most of you already know, the University of Ottawa Library has a long story of commitment toward open access. Uh, we have been committed to the open access movement in principles for many years. Uh, we are offering programs and services to support open access for the research of the University of Ottawa com community. Uh, ju just the existence of, of the division uh, that I'm working in called Open Scholarship and Digital Initiative is a demonstration of the commitment of the library to open access. Uh, indeed, one of the strategic objectives of the strategic plan of the library is to maximize opportunities for participation in the open scholarship movement. So I encourage everyone to visit our section on the website of the library, uh, the section called Scholarly Communication, Communication Savant en français, pour consulter tous les, les programmes et services uh, que la bibliothèque peut offrir. Uh, nous organisons aussi plusieurs événements, uh, des activités, nous offrons des formations en lien avec le libre accès. Uh, entre autres, nous participons aux organisations des activités uh, lors de la semaine annuelle du libre accès, dont entre autres le, le, le prix actuel là, qui a été uh, Uh, ouvert pendant cette semaine-là, au mois d'octobre dernier. Aussi, le, nous avons des activités lors de la semaine de l'éducation ouverte qui, qui aura lieu en mars, donc dans le même mouvement. Uh, donc, tel que le que mentionné précédemment, nous offrons ce, ce, ce prix-là du savoir en libre-accès depuis 2016. Donc, je suis, je suis très heureux de, de féliciter chaleureusement le professeur Boisgonti uh, pour l'obtention du prix. Et je, je désire remercier aussi, les, comme Talia le fait, les autres euh, candidats qui ont soumis des, des projets et leurs candidatures, euh, qui étaient tous de grande qualité. Donc, euh, je vous remercie beaucoup et je cède la parole à notre MC. Merci. Merci beaucoup, Daniel. Euh, donc, maintenant, je demanderai à Liane de présenter, euh, donner plus d'informations au sujet du, du prix. Merci, euh, Mélanie. Uh, je suis très heureuse de vous rejoindre aujourd'hui dans mon nouvel rôle comme bibliothécaire en communication savante et de participer à la cérémonie uh, aujourd'hui. Créé en 2016, le prix du savoir en libre accès de la bibliothèque uh, de l'Université d'Ottawa reconnaît les champions du corps professoral et du personnel enseignant qui font preuve d'excellence en matière de savoir en libre accès aussi bien par leur soutien que par leur propre exemple. Le savoir en libre accès comprend tout ce qui a trait aux publications en libre accès, aux données ouvertes et aux ressources éducatives libres dans les domaines de l'enseignement et de la recherche. Candidates were assessed based on the primary criteria of openness in research and openness in teaching, followed by the secondary criteria of open advocacy and quality of the submission package. Je vous maintenant passer la parole à Andrea Lobel, la co-présidente du Prix du Savoir en Libre Accès, pour présenter notre invité d'honneur. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Leanne. This afternoon, I have the great honor of introducing our 2022 Open Scholarship Award recipient, Professor Mathieu Bourgantier. Depuis son arrivée à l'École des sciences de la réadaptation de l'université, le professeur, professeur Bourgantier a fait preuve d'un engagement indéfectible envers le savoir en libre accès dans son enseignement et ses recherches. Par exemple, dans son module d'enseignement ouvert en français sur la neuroanatomie et la, la neurobiologie du mouvement humain. In addition to the many editorial roles in which he serves, Prof Professor Bourgantier has published or co-published open access articles using open data from the Survey of Health, Aging, and Retirement in Europe, the SHARE database, a research infrastructure that studies the effects of social, health, economic, and environmental policies throughout Europe and elsewhere. En 2022, il a fondé le, la Peer Community in PCI, Health and Movement Sciences, 
un service qui fournit une évaluation par les pairs gratuites et transparentes et des recommandations pour les prépublications dans ces domaines. And now, without further ado, please join me in congratulating Dr. Mathieu Bogantier for his achievements in the area of open scholarship. Merci à Oui, Professor Bogantier has kindly agreed to share some of his work and experiences in open scholarship with us this afternoon, and this will be followed by a question period. So I'll hand the virtual microphone over to him now. Mathieu. Merci, merci pour l'introduction. Merci à tout le monde d'être ici. C'est très apprécié. Euh, je vais commencer à partager, en tout cas essayer de partager mon écran. Alors, celui-là, j'ai un. Je vois le chat aussi. C'est bon, vous voyez tous? Oui, on voit bien de notre côté. Alors, je voulais commencer par remercier euh, la bibliothèque euh, d'Ottawa de me donner l'occasion euh, de présenter pourquoi l'open science, c'est important de mon point de vue, et euh, pour tout ce qui a été organisé autour de ça. Je trouve que c'est vraiment important. Donc, je vais rapidement me présenter. Moi, c'est Mathieu Boisgontier, donc je suis associé de professeur à l'Université d'Ottawa, Faculté des sciences de la santé. Euh, je suis aussi un membre et ancien, ancien co-président euh, de l'association STORC, qui qu est la Society for Transparency, Openness and Replication in Kinesiology. Je suis aussi l'éditeur en chef de leur journal, qui est Diamond Open Access, donc qui est gratuit pour tout le monde, qui s'appelle Communications in Kinesiology, ou SIC. Et récemment, comme on vient de vous le dire, j'ai créé une nouvelle communauté PCI en santé et en sciences du mouvement. Et c'est de ça que je veux parler aujourd'hui, parce que je trouve que cette initiative, elle est vraiment top. Maintenant, je vais passer en anglais, parce que je sais qu'il y a certaines personnes ici qui ne comprennent pas bien le français, notamment des étudiants. Donc, je vais faire la présentation en anglais. So, today, I'd like to present a new initiative, as I said, that greatly contributes to change the way we think about publishing which is urgently needed in my opinion. So this initiative is called Peer Community in or PCI. And to explain you why PCI is important, I need to talk about publishers' revenues. But before that, I'm going to ask, ask you a quick question. So what's the highest fee you've ever paid for publishing an article in a scientific journal? So, combien vous avez payé le plus cher que vous ayez donné pour publier un article? Donc, if you could put your response in the chat, please. So, I would put mine. So, mine would be euros, I think. 3K, 4K, 2K. Yeah. So, look at those numbers. So, in 2019, Publishers' revenues reach $28 billion worldwide. And that's billion with a B. So it's a lot of money. And actually, I think it's too much money to really grasp what this amount means. So let me help you. We know that 40% of these revenues are made in the US. That is $11 billion. And we also know that the total budget of the NIH the same year was around $39 billion. So the annual revenue of scientific publishers in the US is worth 29% of the NIH total budget. So as I said, it's a lot of money. And these $28 billion could be used to fund a lot of research and many researchers. But for now, we decide to give away this money to publishers. Because yes, this money comes from, from us, from researchers, from universities, from research institutions. So mainly from the taxpayers. And the worst is that We all know that in addition to agreeing to pay publication fees that could be described as abusive, we also agree to do the work ourselves for free. So we review, we edit, we do everything 
and we do it for free. And because we are nice people, right? But the result of this free labor that we graciously provide to the publishers is that they are making mega profits. So you can see here that their, their margins are higher than leading companies such as Amazon, Apple, and even Bank of America. So let that information sink in. They make more profit than banks. So I get it. It's a business, a business of research communication. And it's the job of publishers to do whatever they can to make more profits. But I also think that as an academic community that is mainly based on money from taxpayers, we have the responsibility to not waste their money. And I'm sure we all wish their profit margins were more reasonable like that. And we also need to keep in mind that it's not only about the profit, it's not only about the money. So this is the ideal situation we would like to see on the screen. Keeping this money in our community would contribute to its growth, both in terms of size and expertise. But the actual situation right now is this one. Giving this money to publishers reduces our growth and at the same time reduces our decision-making power because we have no say in how this money is used. No say, nothing, we cannot say anything. Yet most likely we wouldn't choose the same way as a publisher. So how can we change the situation? I have a few ideas. For sure, it's not with gold open access that you may have heard of. Gold open access is when the authors or their university have to pay an expensive fee to make their article free to the readers. Because the words open access are in there, people think it's good, but it's actually really bad and it's a big part of the problem. In my opinion, Gold open access is the greenwashing of publishing. It's difficult to fight because it's a clever but harmful marketing spin. But let me be clear here. I don't say that you must completely stop publishing in gold open access because simply because it's not possible. It's impossible for now in my opinion. What I say is that perhaps you could try to consider diamond open access journals sometime, because diamond open access is free for everyone, authors, university, readers, everybody. It's good for everybody. It's good for our community. So gold open access is not part of the solution, but there are other options. In my opinion, one strategy that could pay off is to reclaim the ownership of the peer review process. Because make no mistake, just because you do all the peer review work doesn't mean that you own the process. For now, we do the peer review, but the publishers own them. So what happened, what happened is that we go to their house, knock, knock, hello, my name is Mathieu. Uh, you contacted me earlier, I'm going to do, I'm coming to do the peer review. I promise you, I'll do it as fast and as thorough as I can. And then I do the peer review and I come back and here you go. The work is done. I'm so happy you invited me. Thank you so much. Uh, please let me know when you need another one. Uh, but by the way, I just had a question. I would like to publish my work in your journal, but I think that three to $4,000 is a bit too expensive. It's a bit too much, could we? Discuss it, negotiate a bit. No, no, we cannot. Oh, no way. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Here's my money. Thank you so much. This is what's happening right now. This is the situation. And we don't want that anymore. Because due to this situation, 
we don't have any leverage, we don't have any negotiation power when it comes to the fees and article processing charges or APCs we pay to publish our work in their journal. What we should aim for is to keep doing the peer review work, but doing it outside their houses. We should keep it within our academic community uh, in the public domain. Okay, so let's say we do that. Let's say we do the peer review in our community, but where can we find the manuscripts we need to peer review as they are often directly sent to the publishers? Well, that's an easy one. We can use the pre-printed version of this manuscript. So what is a preprint? A preprint is a scientific manuscript that is uploaded by the authors to a public server. So when you submit or before you submit to the journal, you can submit your manuscript to a public server that would be free for everyone. This preprint is made available to the public within days, which is great, that's perfect. But the problem of preprint is that they are not peer reviewed which is a problem. So let's do a quick slide about preprints. So the first preprint appeared in 1991, so more than 30 years ago, so it's not a new thing. And today, every month in biomedical sciences, more than 14,000 preprints are published. So in my opinion, today, using preprints is a no brainer. So I'm not here to discuss preprints. If you want to know more about it, please visit the ASAP bio website. It's a great website to get all the relevant information you need about preprints. What I'm here for is to discuss the next step, which is how do we get preprints peer reviewed? It seems like an easy step, but I think it's not. So let's see if I'm wrong. So could you please indicate in the chat how many preprints you have ever peer reviewed during your career? So for me, it's zero. So I consider myself a pro open science researcher. And I've reviewed over 200 articles in my career. Yet, I've never reviewed a single peer review, a single preprint, never, none. So my response in the chat is zero. In our field, peer reviewed preprint doesn't actually exist. And we need to change that because this is what can get us a healthier publishing system. And to make peer reviewed preprint a reality, we need to get organized. And that's when PCI comes in. So there are already 15 PCI communities and I just created a new one in health and movement sciences. And that's one of the reasons I got this award today. Now I will explain the editing, peer reviewing and publishing process offered by PCI. The first thing you can do when your study is complete is to put the data and code to a data repository online for free and to post the manuscript to a preprint server online for free. Until recently, this was where the life of a preprint ended. Now you can use the DOI of the preprint and submit it to the PCI website. There, PCI recommenders the equivalent of editors, will take a look at your preprint and decide whether they are interested in editing it. If the preprint is not of sufficient quality, it will likely not be considered by any recommender, which is good because we don't want to publish bad science. When a recommender selects a preprint, they have the responsibility to find at least two reviewers. Then it's the same process as in any journal, major comments, revision, minor comments, revision, and so on. And of course, 
if, the, if it's a bad preprint, it can be rejected. If the quality is deemed satisfactory, the preprint is published in the preprint server. And in addition, the recommender writes a recommendation that is published in the PCI website together with the reviews and the author's responses. So the PCI website looks like this. You have a list of recommended preprints. If you select one, it takes you to the recommendation webpage of the paper where you can find the abstract, the recommendation, the reviews, the recommender's assessment, and the author's replies. So you can find everything. Now, what happens when the preprint is peer reviewed and recommended? There are three options. The first option is to submit the peer-reviewed preprint to this journal, the peer community journal, which will accept your peer-reviewed preprint right away as is. So it's, it's automatic. So if your preprint is peer-reviewed and recommended, you just have to ask, I want it to be published in this journal and it will be done. This journal, the peer community journal, was launched only one year ago and already counts over 115 published articles, which is a lot. In addition, it's a diamond open access journal, meaning that it's free for everyone, authors and readers. The following two options are to submit it to a PCI friendly or non PCI friendly journal. A PCI-friendly journal is a journal that has agreed to consider the peer reviews made by the PCI. And when an editor of a journal decides to become PCI-friendly, there are three options. The first option is to systematically accept to publish the peer-reviewed preprint without further reviews, so it's automatic. The second option is to guarantee a response to the authors within a maximum of five days. The response can be accepted without further reviews. It can be, we like the paper, but we think it could benefit from another review. And the third option is, we are not interested in your preprint, sorry. So this second option, providing a response within five days, is really interesting in my opinion, because it suppresses the cycle of submissions and rejections we have all experienced with some papers, which is a waste of time for the authors, a waste of energy for the reviewers and contributes to the fact that as editors, we need to contact up to 20, 30 reviewers to get, to, to get two of them to do the review of the paper because everybody has too much reviews to do. So we all decline or ignore when we have requests from editors. With PCI, we have one review process, a single one, irrespective of the number of journals the peer review preprint is submitted to. And the third option, which is less interested in my opinion, is to use the PCI reviews, but only if appropriate, meaning they may, but also may not use the peer review made by user PCI. So there are many slides, but at the end of the day, it's a very simple process. Number one, you post your preprint. Number two, you submit, submit the preprint DOI to the PCI website. Number three, a recommender takes care of your preprint that is then peer reviewed and recommended. And then you can submit it to a PCI-friendly journal or any other journal. There are many benefits to this PCI process. The first one is that right away, you have a peer-reviewed preprint to put in your CV. And this preprint is considered a finalized research output by some funding institutions like the CIHR in Canada. So the second uh, benefit is that you know if one or more PCI-friendly journals are interested in your paper within days, 
So you submit your peer review preprint to a journal, you get five days, you get your reject. You submit to a second journal, five days, reject. And you submit to a third journal and your paper got accepted. So you submitted your paper to three journals within 15 days, which usually, usually takes months, if not years. If you don't manage to get uh, your preprint to be published in the journal you initially, initially targeted, you are certain to have the opportunity to publish your paper in a diamond open access journal that should soon be indexed in PubMed, the peer community journal we just discussed. Fourth, you take some peer reviewing workload of the community as we just said, and last but not least, you help the community to take ownership of the peer review process, which in the long term should provide some leverage to negotiate decisions made by the publishers, such as the amount of charges we pay to publish our work. So now that you are aware of all this initiative, I hope you would like to contribute to this PCI. So there are multiple ways to do so. The most obvious is to find the PCI that best fits your expertise. And if you are already a PhD, if you already have a PhD, you can join as a recommender. So yeah, Mathieu give them the link in the chat. Mm. I'll do that because otherwise I will forget. So here's the link to register. So to contribute, you can also follow us on Twitter, but most importantly, you can submit your preprint to a PCI, any PCI, the one you prefer. The one you prefer. We, also, we also need to convince as many journals as possible to become PCI friendly. I really think this is an important step to integrate PCI in the publishing landscape. So please talk to editorial boards about PCI and tell them the process to become PCI friendly is super easy. The editor in chief of the journal just has to fill in this short online form and it's done. They are PCI friendly. They don't have to pay anything, they're just to give their their agreement. You can also talk to your faculties, university, research institutions, libraries, societies you are affiliated with. Tell them it would be good for their image to support the PCI initiative as it shows that they support a healthier publishing system that strengthens our academic community. And if they are afraid to lead the way, tell them they would join many other universities and research institutions across the world, as well as libraries and scholarly societies that already support PCI. So they won't be alone. Many universities, many institutions are already supporting this initiative even if it's pretty new. Finally, you can contribute to open science more broadly by contributing and publishing your work to Diamond Open Access Journal, as well as society and university journals, by sharing your data and code online on repositories for free to everyone, by communicating your science in the way you prefer, so on Twitter, on your blog, any way is good. Don't let other people who are not scientists to do it instead of you. You can also contribute to open access software and packages if you have the skills to do so. And finally, you can preprint your work. Donc, je voudrais finir en remerciant encore euh, la bibliothèque. J'espère que ce prix va continuer dans les années à venir et que ça va même prendre plus d'ampleur. Euh, merci beaucoup pour votre travail et merci de m'avoir écouté aujourd'hui. Et si vous avez des questions, je serais ravi d'essayer d'y répondre du mieux que je peux. 
Merci beaucoup, professeur Boigonti. C'était super comme présentation. Euh, je, euh, je suis vraiment contente personnellement d'en avoir appris plus au sujet de Peer Community In. Um, so I'm going to, um, again, thank you so much for this presentation. It was great. Please feel free to uh, use the, uh, the, the uh, reaction button <laughs> in Zoom um, and add your comments. But right now what we're going to do is actually open the floor to virtual floor to questions or comments. So please raise your hand uh, if you'd like to uh, use the microphone and I'll we'll, uh, try to moderate this discussion. So Stephanie has her hand up, so. Merci beaucoup uh, et félicitations Mathieu. Uh, thanks so much for explaining uh, this. I have briefly heard about PCI and um, I completely am on board with, you know, let's get the power back into the scientific community and just kick out the whole business model, <laughs> especially the companies that make huge profit based on our free labor. The question I have is more kind of concerned with, you know, like getting to move the community to put their free labor now into this. I assume like nonprofit organization run by the academic community, because we're kind of seeing that researchers are really bad to do that because there's so much linked to the whole prestige part of, you know, providing free labor for the prestigious journals, which traditionally are with unfortunately the for-profit publisher. So I think that's also one of the reasons why we're in that mess and, you know, for-profit, profit publishers having kind of um yeah um, made made a perverse model out of open access right not the whole like removing barriers but now making money by having authors pay are you optimistic or what's kind of your plan of actually convincing researchers to now spend their time reviewing for pci instead of reviewing for the prestigious journals, which they used to, and that they are also used to putting on their CV as like, oh, I'm a real great academic. I review for science and nature or, you know, whatever journal in their field. So what, what is kind of your strategy on moving the masses over into that new system instead of them clinging to what we see with publishing to the prestigious often for-profit journals? Uh Thanks for the question, Stephanie. Really good question. Uh, you asked me if I was optimistic. Uh, yeah, I am, but I'm also realistic and I think it will take years, if not decades. Uh, but I'm really confident in the new generation to push that. And in our generation, that kind of the intermediate generation to help them. And I'm just not in a hurry. I need we I think it's a long process. I, I'm happy to be part of it. I, I know more and more people understand it some are a bit afraid to join it because of the old-fashioned way of prestige and i just think that right now prestige is in the wrong place and we are slowly moving it to uh, appropriate uh, research practices which is not the case right now we only focus on uh, sexy results and gradually we move to um appropriate methods which is the most important in the end so and how i will convince people to review for pci i won't convince them i will just i create pt i created pci and i say hey this is existing if you want to shift a bit your cv and be able to show that you contribute to open science you can review for us and it will be obvious it, because it will be public and I don't say that they need to switch to be uh, extremists. Uh, I, I don't think it will ever work. I just say maybe you can do two for the prestigious journals and one for PCI. It won't change anything to your to the time or the energy you invest, but it it, div it diversifies your profile and your CV, and it can only be beneficial because. Well, I never review for nature or, or science if you do good for you. <laughs> but when I review for a journals that are well recognized in my field, if I have two, three or four in the year, it's the same. So if I do two for them instead of three or four, and then I do one for PCI, it's better for my CV as well. And it's better for the academic community. 
So just don't put all your eggs in, in the same basket. That's it. Oh, je crois que Daniel a sa main levée. Tu peux y aller, Daniel. Oui. Bonjour, merci Mathieu pour la présentation, c'est très intéressant. On est aussi en train de se familiariser avec tous les enjeux et les tenants aboutissants de PCI. Euh, je trouvais ça intéressant quand tu parlais du rapport de force euh, qui peut être euh, peut-être euh, modifié ou en tout cas atténué euh, avec, avec PCI lorsque les chercheurs euh, veulent... Euh, négocier ou je ne sais pas trop comment le, le, le présenter pour publier dans une revue qui charge les, les frais. Euh, Est-ce que vous avez pu constater que ce rapport de force-là est, est modifié suite à, à, aux activités de PCI? Je sais que vous recommandez d'aller vers les revues qui sont PCI-friendly, euh, mais est-ce que ce rapport de force-là a commencé? Est-ce que vous avez pu constater des effets de ça déjà? Euh, donc, c'est sur ma question. Alors, nous, on recommande d'aller PCI-friendly, mais en fait, euh, on recommande surtout d'aller vers les Diamond Open Access. Hein. Même s'ils ne sont pas open-friendly, je m'en fiche un peu. Hein. Moi, je vois plus ça d'un point de vue plus général. Je trouve juste que si les journaux ils sont PCI-friendly, ça permet d'avoir un seul euh, peer review process. Et ça, je trouve que c'est super important pour que le peer review process il continue de fonctionner. Euh... Et est-ce qu'on a déjà vu des effets bah, Ça fait un an et demi que ça existe, donc non, on n'a pas vu les effets. Mais euh, si ça commence à bien fonctionner, c'est vers ça qu'on tend. Je, si nous, on fait le boulot, on pourra leur dire, attendez, on a fait tous les peer reviews, les gars. Nous, on aimerait bien que vous baissiez un peu vos prix. Euh, on va pouvoir parler. Pour l'instant, on ne peut même pas arriver à ça. Pour l'instant, on, on, on a juste la porte fermée, on n'a rien à dire. Quoi. Parce qu'ils font tout chez eux. Mais le fait qu'il que y ait déjà plus de 100 articles publiés dans ce journal, je trouve c'est impressionnant quand même. Qui n'est pas encore dans PubMed, qui n'est pas encore référencé, il y a quand même plus de 100 articles, c'est quand même encourageant, je trouve. Euh, si vous avez d'autres questions, euh, il y avait une question dans le clavardage juste avant que tu lèves ta main, Hélène. Ça fait que tu vas être la, la prochaine, mais on va passer à la question dans le clavardage. Euh, mais une question ici, euh, est-ce que la communauté euh, PCI Health and Movement se concentre sur le mouvement et les aspects physiques de la santé ou est-elle ouverte aux recherches relevant davantage de la sociologie de la santé? On est ouvert à, à tout ce qui est santé, ça inclut sociologie. J'essaie de contacter des sociologues. Là, la limitation, ça va être que moi, j'arrive à faire venir des, des éditeurs ou qui appellent ça recommandeurs dans PCI qui sont capables de vous éditer et de vous reviewer. J'en ai un ou deux en tête, tu vois, mais c'est ça qui est limitant, en fait. C'est est-ce que j'ai l'expertise en termes d'éditeur et de recommandeur pour prendre en charge ce, ce type de papier. Mais on est ouvert, vu qu'on est la seule à être dans le domaine de santé pour l'instant. Et si après, on voit que ça prend une grosse place dans notre communauté PCI, on va dire, bah, peut-être vous pouvez créer la vôtre à côté, ou c'est plus orienté euh, sociologie. C'est ça l'idée, en fait. Merci. Euh, Hélène, est-ce que tu voulais poser ta question? Oui, bonjour Mathieu. Merci beaucoup de votre présentation. Euh, le, le, vendredi passé, j'assistais à une présentation de Vincent Larivière là, sur le, les, les, tous les, les, les transformations de la communication savante. Et je remarque que cette initiative PCI, euh, euh, son, son historique, ça a commencé en France. Et je, je me posais la question au sujet de... De, des publications en français, puis euh, de, de la place de, du français dans, dans la communication euh, scientifique. Avec le processus que vous, que vous présentez, euh, cette initiative-là, ça, ça me semble euh, principalement en anglais, puis on comprend très bien qu'on peut pas, ça, on peut pas, il faut choisir ses, ses chev son cheval de bataille, comme on dit, mais en même temps, à l'Université d'Ottawa, comme vous savez, c'est tellement important, là, cette question de, de la bibliodiversité, puis de la place du, du français dans la recherche. Alors, je, je voulais vous poser la question. Alors, moi, j'avoue que je ne me suis pas posé la question, parce que dans mon champ, il n'y a pas de question là-dessus. En fait, tout ce qui est publié... Euh... Pour que ça ait de la valeur, c'est surtout en anglais, dans mon domaine, hein, en neurosciences. Euh, je sais que la plupart des PCI, c'est tout en anglais. Et est-ce que ça serait une option de rajouter une version française si les auteurs le demandent 
si vous voulez qu'on en discute, on peut en discuter. Euh, avec les gens qui sont juste au-dessus de moi, qui sont à l'origine de tout PCI, ils sont super euh, ouverts et super euh, faciles à aborder, en fait. Donc, on pourrait en discuter. Et oui, ça vient de France et c'est justement euh, financé par le gouvernement français, par le CNRS. Euh, je ne vois pas d'autres mains levées jusqu'à maintenant. Il n'y a aussi pas d'autres commentaires dans le... Mais je vois que Talia... OK. <rire> Vas-y, Talia. Merci, Mélanie. Merci, Mathieu, pour une présentation très, très, très intéressante. J'ai une question par rapport aux autres projets qui sont en cours, euh, qui existent dans le monde des sciences ouvertes. Parce que peut-être vous, vous êtes au courant, mais à la bibliothèque, on appuie le système OJS euh, développé par PKP pour euh, héberger les périodiques euh, qui publient en libre accès. Et je ne suis pas au courant s'il y a une, euh, une couche de peer review qui existe dans le système, mais je trouve ça très intéressant que pour PCI, vous avez déjà pensé de tout le flux de travail à partir de, 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 de production de l'article juste au, au moment de diffusion. Et je me demande, puisqu'il y a ces projets qui existent dans le monde, qui appuient certaines étapes de publication en libre accès, avez-vous pensé de peut-être s'il y a des éléments de PCI qui pourraient être, qui pourraient s'intégrer dans d'autres systèmes qui chercher aussi à accomplir des, des fonctionnalités de, de semblable. Je ne sais pas si, si j'ai bien m'exprimé. Si, je crois que euh, c'est très, très bien exprimé. Euh, donc, OGS, je connais parce que le journal où je suis éditeur en chef, là, qui est euh, Diamond Open Access, il utilise OGS. Sauf que pour moi, c'est pas... L'OGS, il arrive après le processus PCI, en fait. Il arrive quand on va essayer de publier notre... Euh, Peer Review Preprint dans un journal. Donc, il est plus à la fin de la chaîne. Et euh, PCI, ils ont fait leur, euh, leur site online où ils mettent tout le matériel euh, qui est aussi en open access. C'est le même principe. Quoi. Donc, euh, je pense que ça se complète bien, en fait. Parce que tout ce qui est sur OGS, où on veut, entre, entre guillemets, euh, tamponner une marque de journal sur notre article, il se fait après le processus PCI. Donc, c'est complémentaire. Et, euh, et puis, pour être clair, hein, moi, je ne défends pas que PCI, je défends tout le système. S'il y a une initiative qui est meilleure que PCI et qui intègre PCI, ça me va aussi. Hein. Merci. Je prévois peut-être des discussions dans le futur <rire> ensemble. Avec plaisir. Avec plaisir. Uh, so, there's just a few answers, I think, by Stephanie in the chat at the same time as this conversation was happening, that uh, saying that OGS manages the peer review process, but behind the scenes in a traditional way. So a couple of us added the link to OJS in the chat. Uh, and Stephanie mentioned it's the open equivalent of something like Manuscript Central used by publishers. Ouais, OJS, uh, pas forcément sur les préprints. C'est ça. Nous, on veut favoriser les préprints parce que c'est ça qui fait que c'est open à tout le monde dès le départ et que c'est plus transparent. Euh, donc, on a peut-être du temps pour une dernière question. Si quelqu'un a quelque chose à ajouter. Sinon, moi, je vais en avoir une, mais je ne vais pas. Euh... Donc, je vais poser une question. Euh, C'est au sujet de la reconnaissance. Donc, par exemple, euh, dans ce cas-ci, bon, il y a le prix du savoir en libre accès. Euh, donc, on. Donc, vos, vos, vos pairs vous reconnaissent pour le travail que vous faites euh, dans le domaine du libre accès et la science ouverte. Euh, mais moi, je me pose toujours la question, jusqu'où cette reconnaissance va, par exemple, dans le, dans le, le domaine de, pour avoir sa permanence, mais aussi pour, euh, pour avoir des promotions dans, le, dans notre système universitaire. Donc, je ne sais pas si vous, de votre, de votre expérience, euh, est-ce que ces choses-là sont reconnues? comme dans, dans le processus. Est-ce que vous avez été capable de justement faire valoir ces, ces, ces projets-là dans, 
euh, dans, dans vos demandes, dans votre dossier, euh, et que ça peut, dans le fond, peut-être inspirer d'autres personnes à euh, plus se concentrer sur l'ouverture. Uh, merci pour la question. Uh, I'll try to uh, reply in English because I think it's important. So, in my opinion, if you do a science or a nature paper, open science won't replace this. It's too big. But if you have your big papers, publish it in journals. Right now, this is the, the way to go. If I have a big paper, I won't publish in a small journal that is just because it's Uh, diamond open access. I won't do that because it's too dangerous for my career. But if I have an um, average quality paper that I already published 20 papers like this, I don't need a 21, 20, 22 paper, 23. It won't change anything to my CV. But I will try to strengthen the open science uh, part of my CV with this type of articles that are not so important and that won't make a difference if I just added another middle-class journal. So when I have a paper that I assess is okay, I'm sure I will try to go with open, uh, open science practices and everything, open science journal, diamond open access, because I know I can value this more in my CV, CV than a journal that either nobody knows or everybody knows it's borderline predatory, I know I would prefer open science because then I can say when I explain my CV, when I apply for funds or when I apply for uh, a promotion or for uh, my tenure, I can say, hey, look, I'm trying to make the community better. I'm trying to improve the system. And I don't feed this not really predatory journals, but kind of, I don't feed them with our money. I prefer to invest in our community and I take the risk because it's a risk, risk to do so right now. But I also have other papers because I cannot be fully open access right now because it's not fully accepted so far. So it's too dangerous. It's so dependent on who is on the jury or of who is on the selection committee and I cannot control that. So I need, I need to be careful. So I have to publish good papers and publish some open science So it's a fine line, but I need to find this line. And hopefully the line will gradually go toward open access is more important. And it's a long process. This is what I said, it would take decades, but this is the way we should go towards to because this is what is healthier for our community instead of for the publishers. Merci beaucoup pour votre réponse. Um, so, we only have three minutes left, so unless it's a very short question, <laughs> um, we may actually conclude uh, the ceremony. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so people are saying uh, congratulations again in the, in the chat. Donc, en effet, uh, félicitations encore. So, um, ça conclut notre euh, cérémonie de remise du... En fait, on a déjà remis le prix <rire> il y a un petit bout de temps. <rire> euh, mais aujourd'hui, c'était la chance de, à professeur Boisgonti de nous parler euh, de quelque chose qui lui tient à cœur. Donc, euh, euh, félicitations encore, euh, professeur Merci Boisgonti. Merci beaucoup pour votre travail. Merci beaucoup pour votre présentation et bien entendu pour votre engagement envers le libre accès. Um, and I, I guess I should say, in particular, a sustainable form of open access um, and, and open science more generally. Uh, and of course, thank you all for attending today uh, and for um, supporting uh, as well in your own way, uh, open access and being interested in open access and open science. So this concludes the ceremony. Thank you very much. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.